Now, I just want to touch on some things. I, I have this funny thing that happened today. I, got, um, I was looking for an image to start my PowerPoint off, and I, could, I, I didn't find one. And, um, and then I, I, it was a bit earlier in the night, so I thought I'll have a look at my emails just to try and get myself thinking. And I opened up an email from a Chinese company that sells me lights now and again. And this is on it. It's kind of ironic from an, from an atheistic uh, co company, from an atheistic country, seeing this beautiful, and they've caught the sparkle of the, of the, of the, of the meaning behind Christmas. I thought it was quite special. It took me a while to figure out how to download an animation and put it into my PowerPoint, but I got there. Because <laughs> it, it really reminds me of some things about what happened with Christ that night, because it's a powerful, powerful story. And, and when, we, when we get this story, it's actually a manual. It, it talks about a manual, the one who is God with us. And, and that's, that's the reality, you know? God with us. That's what a manual means. God with us. And when we start to look at the story, we see that, in actual fact, he's an ancient newborn. The scripture says it like this in Micah. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. You know? In fact, we know if we unpack the whole story, he was involved in the creation of the earth. And the creation of creation. Then the second thing is, it's a miraculous hope. A miraculous hope comes about and Isaiah talks about it, and he says this, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him. So then when we get it further into the story, though, we hit a bit of a bump in the curve. Because what happens, there's this couple, Joseph and Mary, and Joseph has become suddenly very, very troubled. Because what actually happens, he, gets, he has this dream. It says, um, it tells us a story like this. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about in Matthew 1.18. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not, not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had a mind to divorce her quietly. You see, when you're engaged, you were divorced. You, you, you were essentially almost married, but not sleeping together at that point. So he's going to get rid of her. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins because, um, yes, sure, Jesus means um, the one who saves. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, and the prophet Isaiah, of course, and so it quotes, the, 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 in this dream, what actually happens, it quotes the passage we've been already just reading. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. It's a really powerful statement. If God is with us, who can be against us? That's the truth of the matter. It's, it's there. And so when we look at the whole thing, Jesus actually ends up here. He ends up here. In a real sense, Jesus is here. Yes, of course, he's represented by the power of the Holy Spirit today, but it's because of what Jesus did that, he, that, that, that we have the Spirit in our lives and the Spirit able to be in our lives. And if we don't know Jesus, we don't know the power of the Spirit in our lives. But once you come to really know him and you, and you let him have control, something changes. Something very powerful happens in our lives. And, and God wants us to understand that. Jesus is here. And so when we look at it, one of the things that, and I'll finish with this slide tonight, one of the things that we see that Jesus' presence comes and he ends up saying some, there's some strong words said. And Jesus says, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. And I, I think that's a, a, a powerful thing on a, on a Christmas Eve night that we remember there's no more darkness. It's interesting, we cel celebrate it in darkness, don't we? But there is no more darkness. 
Because even if the world is dark, the light of Christ is in us and for us and with us and leading us and guiding us and being there in every sense of the word. Because he's Jesus. He's the one who saves. He's the Lord. He's the one who redeems. He is the Lord. He's the one who empowers. He is the Lord. He's the one who cares for us. He is the Lord. No human can match those qualities at all. So at the end of the day, we've got to celebrate it. Now, we took two minutes longer than we thought we were going to on the service. Not bad, is it? But we're going to pray, finish with a prayer. Lord Jesus, as we break into this new day, we want to say thank you for being with us, for being our Redeemer, for being our Saviour, for being our Lord, for being the one who, who, who redeems, for being the one who, who was willing to, to come to earth as ancient, old, ancient person to lay yourself to becoming like us so that this world might be changed by your love and your power and set free from the bondages of, of the enemy of Satan and his ways of sin, his ways of destruction, his ways of tempting, his ways of getting us involved in things that are wrong in, in your eyes, Lord. And we want to say, Lord, we want no part of that. We want every part of your kingdom instead. We want every part of what you've done, Jesus, for us. And so we come to you and we allow you the freedom to do what you want to do in Jesus' mighty name. And all the people said, Amen. May the Lord. Amen. Always forget that. God bless you. Have an incredible day today. Some of you will be back here at 9 15. We've got a, a great service set up for then. And uh, just have an awesome time. If, if you're not able to be here and you're with family and that, just know that God's going to be with you and take him with you wherever you go. God bless you.